my, uh, it's supposed to be a workshop, but it's more of a presentation, uh, called Selling in a Free Adult Economy. So before I get started, I'm going to take about five minutes to just tell you a little bit about myself so you know who I am in case you don't know who I am. I expect most of you probably don't know me. Uh, I started the adult industry in 1997 online. I think everybody likes to say 1997 as their start date. I think that's kind of like a given. Uh, but I did. I started in 1997 and um, actually held the number one, uh, between number one and number two spot on Google for porn for about 18 months in 2007. And uh, uh, I sold and went mainstream in 2009. Uh, in between there, I actually got Google slapped and lost my number one position for, for porn on Google, which gave me a good, uh, a good push to get into mainstream. And that's where I am today. Uh, I actually kind of saw the writing on the wall with free content early on and said, uh, kind of took my cue to move into mainstream where people were still paying for physical products and ebooks and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this year I wrote a book uh, called The Chronic Marketer. It's a copy here. There's actually a whole bunch of copies there on the table. They're free. So take them if you want them. I, brought, I think I brought about 50 with me. I also have an iPhone, iPad app called Frampix. Uh, right now we're up to about 75,000 users. We started that in, when did we start that? Maybe four or five months ago we started that. Um, so I've got an iOS app and I also co-own an instant affiliate platform in mainstream uh, called JVZoo. Um, so that's what, uh, that's a little bit about me. So coming from adult and then getting out and going into mainstream has given me a really unique perspective. I have uh, kind of an eye for both industries and I can see how there's a lot of crossover, how the adult tech works really well in mainstream and vice versa. So today we're going to discuss the 2013 adult audience. We're going to make some observations on the uh, paid versus free model. So my remote's on the Wi-Fi, so it's taking a second here. No, but I'm just going to use the arrows on here. We're going to talk about user experience issues. This is a real uh, bone of contention for me, and I think you guys are going to appreciate where I'm coming from on this. We're going to talk about what works on buyers now, um, and we're going to talk about what people are paying for today in mainstream uh, and in adult that you guys are probably missing the boat on. You know, there's a lot of, of stuff in mainstream people are paying for that they're getting for free in adult, and I think there's some ways we can transition some of these uh, models into adults. So we're really going to kind of laser in on what the mainstream and the adult buyer is willing to pay for and what they are paying for today and how you can integrate that into your back end. So why do I start off with a picture of a forest? Uh, I have an analogy that I use and I'll get into it in a second, but the forest represents for us a place where if we all needed to right now, we could go back to the forest and sustain ourselves. We could eat in the forest, we could clothe ourselves, and we could shelter ourselves in the forest. Um, so it sort of represents a place where if we wanted to live off the land and not have the life of convenience that we're used to, any of us could go back to this place with, you know, maybe some survival training and live in the forest for free. All the food we want, all the clothes we need, all the shelter we need is free for us in the forest. But let's be honest, this is how most of us get our food today. We go to the grocery store. Um, you know, we're happy to go to the grocery store because we're willing to pay for packaging, quality, convenience, community. I always get a laugh out of this one because if you live in a city like, like Los Angeles, you won't see this, but um, I live in a really small town. And at my grocery store, people stop in the fucking aisle and have discussions about their kids' soccer game and all that shit. Those people drive me nuts, that's why I don't go shopping, I hate the grocery store. But people go to the grocery store for community, people go to Walmart so they can chat with their fucking friends, right? So this is what people are willing to pay for. They're willing to pay for the experience. They're willing to pay for trusted brands. They're willing to pay for the food that's in the forest to be commoditized, packaged, uh, and made easier, okay? And this is what our industry looked like for the longest time, right? The free porn, the, the free adult content, 
was the forest, right? We had to go to the news groups, and we had to go to, you know, TGPs and watch 15-second movie clips. And, you know, we had to really jump through a lot of hoops to get free adult content, because bandwidth was expensive, you know, there was a number of barriers to making free content as plentiful as it is today. So, this is what our industry looked like. The buyer saw free porn as too much of a headache and was willing to jump over to the supermarket experience and pay for a, a, a pay site membership or some other type of paid product because it represented a better user experience, an easier user experience, and more quality, right? People are willing to pay for quality. They're willing to pay for a lot of this kind of stuff. So, I had to do some research to put this talk together. And in order to do this, I joined 11 pay sites last week. And I downloaded a fuck ton of porn when I did that, and I have a full hard drive at home to, 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 uh, to prove it. And uh, I learned a lot, because it's been a while since I've joined an adult website. In fact, the last time I would have joined an adult website would have been probably testing my own flow on my own pay sites in you know, maybe 2006. So it's been a while since I've paid for adult content. And as someone who comes from mainstream and who builds user experiences for a living, and builds sales funnels for a living, I really got to see what you guys are doing, and what you're doing right, and what you're doing wrong. And I also polled over a thousand Facebook users to get feedback on some of these experiences. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. So here's the websites I joined in no particular order. AmateurAllure.com. It's one of yours? Uh-oh. You're in trouble, dude. I'm sorry. I'm naming names today, and it's not going to be fun. <laughs> Naughty America. Suicide Girls, my personal favorite. I don't know what it is about these girls with tattoos and pink hair, but Jesus Christ, I think they're hot. SunnyLeone.com. I basically decided to pick on all the ex-biz award winners from last year, because I figured they're supposed to be the best, right? AbbyWinters.com. Videobox.com. Hustler.com, HotMovies.com. Any of you here from Hot Movies? You don't want to put your hand up too high. <laughs> I actually really liked your back end. The, my my only beef with it was the pay per minute model. I found that kind of really restrictive. I felt like I was always being watched. Kind of had funny experience with that, but um, very 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 slick back end on HotMovies.com. And I joined Brazzers.com. Come on. Uh, ThinkVisualPad.com and GF Revenge, Girlfriend Revenge. So, I joined that many porn sites in the course of four days. And uh, let's talk first about the free porn user experience. I'm going to jump ship here for just a second before I get into pay. I've only got two slides for this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, to test the free porn experience, I went to this website here, you guys are probably all familiar with these guys, uporn.com. So, uporn.com has a very cool free porn user experience. When I go to uporn.com, I click one single thumbnail, and I'm watching a porn movie. Like that. It's that quick. Get to the page, click a thumbnail, and a movie starts playing automatically. There's no waiting. There's no interstitial ads for me to click on. Nothing. It's very clean. Let's see if I can actually get these slides to split here. Oh yeah, we can too. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the paid user experience. The free porn user experience was that simple. Go to uPorn, click on a thumbnail, watch a movie. It's that simple. Holy fuck was this different. Okay. Paying for adult content in 2013 sucks donkey balls. Okay. I'm going to be a bit of an asshole today because I can. User experience number one, videobox.com. Anybody here from Videobox? Couldn't process my credit card, declined. User experience number two, amateur allure. Oh boy. Okay. First impressions, I got to their join page, 
Uh, they had a really nice tour, really good photography, really good models, really good looking content. I got to their join page, and they had a little box at the bottom of the join page that said, join anonymously with Netcash. Anybody here from Netcash? Another hand one? <laughs> okay. Netcash was cool. This was really slick, right? This gives me the option to pay a third party and keep my information private from the site that I'm joining and still get a username and password and still pay recurring billing. So I jumped right over the Netcash experience because as a, you know, I try to put, I try to put on the, the hat of a mainstream, you know, person who's just like, maybe my wife went away for the weekend and, you know, uh, I want to download some porn and, and, you know, what's this going to be like? Well, I don't want them emailing me. I don't want to get you know, spam to death after I cancel or whatever, so I joined through this anonymous platform, which I thought was really slick. Then I landed in their members area, and this is what I was presented with. Now this members area, I believe, looks like ass. Um, compared to their tour, which has tons of thumbnails, tons of scenes, tons of, you know, join now buttons, they have more thumbnails on their, on their uh, landing page than they have in their members area, right? I just paid, shouldn't my experience look exactly like the tour or better, right? You guys have these beautiful fucking tours, and then you take me back to 1997 with this fucking members area that looks like it was done in Dreamweaver. Is it, is it just me? Okay, so I've been a member of Amateur Allure now for a total of eight minutes. Eight fucking minutes. Are you ready for this? This is the message I get. If you have been directed to here, your account has been temporarily activated for the following reason. Multiple logins or subnets. Now keep in mind, this was a password they gave me. Okay? I can guarantee you I didn't share it. And I use a Mac, and I got a pretty secure connection to the internet. I'm pretty sure I don't have people in other countries watching my every move. But who knows, right? You never know. So I filled out a support ticket. Very disappointed. My boner's gone. I'm ready to cut my wrists. I'm doing bomb hits waiting for this guy to show up. And actually, to be fair, this was a Sunday afternoon, and this Eric guy got back to me within five minutes. And this is the letter he sent me. And I highlighted the scariest part of this letter. It said, your account was automatically locked because your username and password was being accessed from three different countries. So. Three different countries. <laughs> now, I'm a savvy internet guy, I'm techie, I get it, right? But I pulled a bunch of mainstream Facebook users and I showed them this user experience and I asked them to comment on it. You want to see what they said? First thing everybody said, was I hacked? <coughs> Did this porn site just give me a virus? Should I cancel my credit card? These are the questions, people, this is what goes through people's heads when you tell them their password was compromised and used in three different countries, okay? Should I charge back my credit card? Should I delete my history? Will my wife find out about this? Is my son gonna have to come and fix my fucking laptop again? <laughs> this is what goes through the average surfer's head when you tell them this bullshit, okay? And the last, this is what everybody said, I'm fucking done. I'm never joining another porn site again after this. People are scared shitless of this kind of stuff. We get it. Everybody in this room gets that experience. They all get it. I got locked out for some reason. Who knows why, right? But I get that it was a screw up, okay? But the average user is now shit scared of their computer, you, and Visa, okay? That's what, that's what they're afraid of right now. They're wondering what's gonna happen next. So I followed his instructions which said, go to this page and request a new password. It didn't recognize my username. Four minutes later, my compromised password that we used in three different countries by who knows who, all of a sudden started working again and still works today. Now, does anybody in this room believe that if my password got shared and used in three different countries, including my own, that it should ever work again? Obviously, this guy at Amateur Allure Support had no fucking clue what happened to my password. He just had a stock answer that he gave me, but they didn't look at his emails to realize that that email scares the shit out of every person who fills out a support ticket. Do you guys agree with this shit? Am I on my own here? Okay. So the next morning, 
Now, to be fair, I really like Amateur Alert. So I downloaded a lot of stuff. Um, so I got this the next morning. <laughs> Excessive usage. <laughs> okay, okay, I downloaded a lot of fucking videos. I get it, right? But I just paid, and, and he's actually got a really funny message here about chafing and lube, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill myself by jerking off too much and all this kind of stuff. It's actually really funny. But I just paid, I, this isn't a trial membership. I bought a full month membership here, guys. I didn't cancel. I bought a full month. I didn't even buy the fucking trial. Okay? And this is what I got. You know who I never see this message on? Uporn. Uporn never tells me I've excessively used it, and I've excessively used Uporn. <laughs> Way more than I use fucking amateur allure, and they never give me this message. Okay? So how do I feel about continuing my membership with amateur allure after this experience? You think I'm gonna stick? Cancel. Okay. User experience number three, sunnyleone.com. Now I really, you know, we all have a soft spot, spot for Sunny. I really wanted this to work well. As soon as I got to her join page, I didn't even try and exit, and I get this exit chat script. I didn't try and leave. And it's saying, hey, honey, where are you going? Come back, they'll give you 30% off. Okay. So here's my exchange with fucking Rachel at exit chat. Hey, honey, sign up today, I'll give you 30% off your monthly membership. Click here before it's too late. Just type hi or hello, and I'll give you a great deal, sweetie. Honey and sweetie. Hi. Hi, handsome, why are you leaving? Click here, give me 30% off, we've got HD videos and all that other shit. So I respond to her, I said, actually, I'm on a joint page, I'm already seeing a 30% offer, and by the way, how do you know I'm handsome? <laughs> oh, if you've already signed up and have no further questions, feel free to close this chat and have a nice day. And then responds to the handsome question with just do. So I said, oh hey, I clicked the link, same price as before. She goes right back into her sales pitch again. I, even, I actually have a way longer chat log. I could have made my whole talk about this fucking chat log where I started getting creepy and saying, does Sunny get my gifts? Does she get my Amazon gifts? <laughs> she just kept replying with the same fucking message. I'll give you 30% off, just click here, just click here. I was already on the 30% off page. The chat window was bogus and redundant, okay? It was bullshit from the start. The average user Okay, believes that this Rachel chick is actually chatting with him. We all get it, it's a bot, right? I know. We're poor people, we get that. But me, average Joe Surfer, trying to join an adult site right now, I want to see Sonny of the Ohm's tits. This is, what I, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this woman who keeps repeating herself, and I believe I'm talking to a human being until I hit this wall where she keeps repeating herself, and then I realize I just got duped into chatting with a fucking robot for the last 30 minutes. Now, how do I feel about the honesty of the people who are providing me with this content when I can't even chat with a real person when I'm trying to leave, like, you know, when, when this chat window pops up, it's not even a real person, it's just phony. In mainstream, when you see a live chat window, you actually get somebody. Maybe they're in the Philippines and their English is fucking terrible, but you at least get somebody talking to you, right? So, my trust factor was completely gone, and if I was a normal user, I probably wouldn't have joined. But I did. Okay, this by the way goes from bad to worse. Anybody here from Naughty America? Oh good. Nobody's here from Naughty America, so we can really talk about them then, is that okay? I need to caffeinate, sorry, it's gonna be All right. NaughtyAmerica.com. Oh boy. So, first thing I see when I go to the join page. You guys all know what this is, right? It's the pre-checked cross-sell. Sign me up for a one-day membership to tonightsgirlfriend.com for, this was Canadian dollars because I'm in Canada, $4.13, and after one day it renews to 26, terms and conditions. Okay, now, stick with me here for a second. I have a boner brain right now. I'm trying to sign up to an adult website, and all I see is a checkbox and then I see the blue text that says terms and conditions. We are conditioned as mainstream users. How many people here use iTunes? All your hands up if you use iTunes. Now keep your fucking hand up if you've read the terms and conditions on iTunes. Yeah, exactly. Zero. Okay? 
So I believe now, when I check this box, that I'm agreeing to in terms of conditions if I don't read the paragraph, okay? But I did. I read the paragraph. So, you know, I'm, my wife's out of town for the weekend. I'm thinking about joining these other sites. So, all right, I want to know if tonight's girlfriend is right for me. Well, I can't click on the link to go and see it because they didn't hyperlink the address to the website. They don't want me to leave this join page, but they sure want me to cross-sell. So I popped a new window, and I copied tonightsgirlfriend.com, and I went to the tour. I spent five minutes trying to decide whether or not I wanted to join this website, and I made the decision that this isn't right for me. I don't like this website. I don't like these girls. I don't think I want this membership. So I go back to the join page, and I uncheck the pre-checked cross-sell. And I fill out all my information. I give them my name, my email address, my username, my password, my credit card number, expiration, and CVV. Okay? I'm committed now. I've given you my credit card number. <laughs> this is the fucking message I got. Session timeout. Okay? I just went to check the other tour that you're fucking cross-selling. I spent five minutes there, and now I, get, I just gave you my credit card number, and this is the only message I received. Session timeout. Okay, so again, I go back to the Facebook people that were very loyal to me and giving me lots of good feedback from the mainstream space about the porn user experience, and I said, here's what happens. You fill out a, a sign-up page, you give up all your billing information, and you receive a message that says session timeout. First question everybody asked, was my card already charged? Wouldn't you want to know? Shouldn't there be a fucking message on that page that says, it's okay, your credit card has not been charged. Don't worry. Everything's okay. I'm, th I'm thinking you guys have just raped my financial history and stolen my identity, okay? Keep in mind, these people are not sophisticated like we are. They're not techie. They're not nerds like everybody in this room, okay? They don't get it. What the fuck is a session? People don't know what a session is. How the hell did it even time out? What the fuck is that? I was in for a masturbation session. I guess it did time out. It's fucking over. Should I sign up again? You porn was a lot easier than this. Okay. I'm not done with Naughty America. These guys were probably the worst on my shit list, and I kind of wish somebody was here, but it's all good. This is the Naughty America login page. I've paid for my... Now, keep in mind, I'm a techie nerd, so I understand what a session is, and I understand session time, and that means you didn't charge my credit card. I get it. So I hit my back button, and I filled all that shit out again, and got my membership to Naughty America. This is the Naughty America user experience. Anybody here a member of Naughty America? No, most of you guys don't join adult sites. You're in the biz. Why the fuck would you join Naughty America? So, every time I log in, not just the first time, every time I log in, I gotta give them my username, my password, and a captcha. I have to fill out a fucking captcha every time I log into Naughty America. Are you fucking serious? I'm not doing that shit. Google doesn't do that to me on a free Gmail account unless I log in too many times with the wrong password. Facebook doesn't do it to me unless I start spamming users, right? I gotta really beat up a free user account on all the free shit on the internet before I ever see a captcha. But Naughty America wants it from me every time I log in. Do I really want to keep my membership if that's one more hoop I gotta jump through? And do you know how many, look, do you know how many old people can't fucking type a CAPTCHA to save their lives and fuck it up over and over and over again? They fuck it up! Okay, so I, I put in my CAPTCHA, I put in my username and my password. This is what I get. This is their OTO, one-time offer. It's not one time. I get it every fucking time I log in. Now again, I just joined your website. I just joined Naughty America, okay? I believe that I've just paid for a user experience. Now I see this that says Naughty Americans, which sounds very familiar to the site I just joined, and there's a big orange button that says Unlock Now. 
Well, I just paid for my membership. I guess I need to unlock it, right? No? Well, if I click the unlock button, they're going to instantly charge my credit card on file. All I have to do is click. And my card gets charged. Okay? So I read the fine print. Now I'm afraid to click fucking anything. <laughs> right? I'm looking really hard at this thing going, where do I click that's not going to charge my credit card? It's that little close button up in the top corner on the right. Now, I understand. I was in the biz. I get cross-selling. I get upselling. I fucking get all that shit. You guys got to run a business. You pay bounties on members. The only way to retain those bounties is to get bounties from other people. I fucking get it. However, the mainstream user today does not put up with this bullshit. So I close that. Now I get an offer wall for six other pay sites. Okay? Every time I log in, not just the first time, every time. So down here at the bottom, way below the fold, I have to click this little no thanks text link to say click here to continue to Naughty America. Now I'm on the back end of NaughtyAmerica.com and I'm still two clicks away from watching a porn movie. Okay? So six clicks it takes to get to the porn in the, in the members area of Naughty America versus one click on youporn.com. Sorry, I'm just going to caption it here again. <laughs> I promise I'm going to stop dumping on you guys in a minute here. So browsers.com declined my credit card. Couldn't sign up. Does any of this experience sound like the forest analogy I gave you earlier? Like you're all going hunting for your fucking porn in a member's area you just paid for? So let's talk about some of the obstacles in the paid content model for adult entertainment. In all the 11 members areas, I went in and I did a, a, a tally of the number of clicks that it takes to get to my content, and I divided it by the 11 sites that I joined. The average was four. Four clicks to get to my porn. You porn is one. Keep that in mind. That's who you're competing with. You're competing with three, and it's easier, and there's less ads. You porn doesn't have any interstitial ads like that. You porn doesn't make me close windows before I can watch a movie. And they don't show me offer walls, and I don't have my credit card on file. Okay? Timeouts and lockouts, credit card declines, pre checked cross sells on join pages, too many ads and upsells. Again, I, I have to stress this enough. I come from this business and I understand upsells, I get it. But as a consumer, my expectation is that the paid user experience should be ad-free. In fact, the mainstream world of online payments and memberships and things that we are willing to pay for online has conditioned us, the user, to expect an ad-free experience when we spend money with you. This isn't about squeezing the shit out of the surfer so that he feels like garbage for joining your site but you raped him financially so you don't care. This is about retention. This is about keeping a member and building a brand that makes them trust you and want to come back. And even when they cancel, they feel good about the experience and they tell their friends they had a good experience and they come back. It's 2013. Porn isn't in the closet anymore. People talk about it. They share information. They tell each other about their good and bad experiences. You know what? I got a membership on this site. They jerked me around, double dipped my credit card. I'd never join that one again. But I got one for this one. They were really good to me. People remember that shit. Especially when everyone else is treating me like a piece of meat. Right? The one site that gives me a good user experience, I'm going to remember. Most of them aren't, but a few of them are. So here's a couple of examples, and maybe I didn't need to illustrate this, but I thought I should. And there are hundreds more examples like this on the internet where people are willing to pay for an ad-free experience. Uh, anybody here use Evernote? Okay, a lot of hands. Keep your hand up if you're paying for Evernote Premium. Okay, one of the biggest sales pitches for Evernote Premium when they first launched was security and an ad-free experience. Right? We're going to take the ad off the Evernote app on your phone and on your desktop. <coughs> 45 bucks a year, right? Ten reasons to go premium, one of them is high promotions. Kindle Paperwhite, another good example. 
It's 20 bucks extra to get the Kindle Paperwhite that doesn't have ads. We're willing to pay more for an ad-free experience. In fact, some of you might even take this as to say, hey, maybe we should have two options on our join page, right? Pay less for an experience with ads, pay more for a VIP experience, we stripped all the ads out of our members area, pay a little bit more, get that experience. All right, so I want to take a minute to talk about what works on adult entertainment users today because through all this bad experience, I also had some really cool breakthroughs. I was like, damn, there are some companies that are innovating in this business today doing shit that I think is pretty fucking cool. So Video Box was the first one, and, and Hot Movies has a similar uh, option. So they, I, I give them both really big points for innovating on this shit. I couldn't join Video Box because they wouldn't accept my credit card because apparently they don't want my money. But um, does, you guys know what a Roku is? It's a set-top box. You plug into your TV and allows you to watch digital, digital streaming content on your TV. I think this is brilliant. In their marketing, they have a couple on the sofa watching adult entertainment. They pitch you on the set-top box. It's a Netflix experience for adult entertainment. It allows me to watch streaming video in the comfort of my home with my wife on TV in my bedroom, right? This takes adult entertainment from me with a box of Kleenex at my fucking desk hoping nobody's going to come in to, hey, honey, you want to watch some content tonight? And why don't we gonna watch a little bit of, you know, Blacks on Blondes or whatever? I don't know. I just picked that at random. I don't know where that came from. So I really think this is the wave of the future for us. This is the supermarket. Roku is the fucking supermarket. I'm willing to pay for that experience. I would actually, it's funny, my buddy Anthony, I, I showed this to you, he's not even in, in, in the adult biz, but you're a mainstream marketer. I showed this to you and he was like, I'm getting that membership, dude. I'm fucking buying this right now. I'm fucking this. <laughs> and he doesn't normally pay for adult content. I showed him this page and he flipped out. In fact, with these guys, if you join for 18 months, they'll give you the Roku. How cool is that? Right? Hey, honey, guess what I got? <coughs> I thought that was pretty slick. And Pink Visual, they also get points for having an iPad-friendly website. Uh, most websites, Uporn included, are iPad-friendly. Uh, I didn't find their user experience to be overly awesome, but I did like the fact that they targeted my iPad because the iPad is a more personal device, right? We all understand that. Uh, you know, there might be a computer that's shared in the house, but if you have an iPad, it's probably yours and you can consume a lot more porn on it than, you know, your family computer where your daughter's got to do her homework or whatever, right? So, uh, these two guys get really good points, and as do Hot Movies for offering a Roku experience. Um, I think if you're in the biz today and you're not looking at one of these options, you're going to be a fucking dinosaur in a few years. I really do believe that. Promise discrete billing. When I saw this net cash join option on Amateur Allure, I was blown away. It felt like it felt like PayPal. That's what it felt like. It felt like I was paying with PayPal. It gave me that kind of warm, fuzzy user experience that um, I was going to do this, and I wasn't going to have to give up my email address. I wasn't going to have to give up my privacy. I wasn't going to have to worry about what was going to show up later. You know, if I was going to get fucking dildo catalogs in the mail or some shit, or who knows, you know. This is what goes through people's heads when they join a porn site, okay? They're like, oh man, they want my billing address, that's my home address, and my wife checks the mail. What are they gonna mail me? Right? So, give me an anonymous join option, you're probably gonna see a lot more fucking money coming into your, uh, into your merchant account. This one, I, you know, I couldn't believe how few adult sites in 2013 have any kind of trust icons on their join page. This to me, and, and we've tested this in mainstream to work way better. You put a trust icon on your fucking join page and your sales go through the roof by comparison. Okay? Now this is good because Hustler got their SSL certificate from GoDaddy, so they have the GoDaddy.com verified and secured security badge, and they also have the website secure, which I guess is uh, the guy in the industry, what's his name, Stuart? Stuart. Who does that? Uh, brilliant. I love this stuff, okay? This makes me feel safer about giving you my information. It makes me feel like, uh, like I'm getting a more trusted experience. GoDaddy, we all know GoDaddy. We all watch the Super Bowl. We've all seen the GoDaddy commercials. We recognize the brand. So Hustler, although they're their own brand, 
can leverage the trust and the, the, uh, the, the, the warm, fuzzy feeling people get when they see another trusted brand name on your joint page. GoDaddy's a well-known uh, well business in the in, in mainstream world. Everybody knows who they are. Having a verified button by them makes a huge difference. Have a clear refund policy. Not everybody did this. And again, we've tested this in mainstream. Refunds, offering a, a money back guarantee increases your customer loyalty, increases their feeling about making that choice to actually give up their money because they, they have a feeling that, hey, if I'm really unhappy, you guys have promised me that no questions asked, you're going to give me my money back. Yes, it's going to increase refunds, but it's going to lower chargebacks. So having a clear refund policy makes a shit ton of sense. All right. I think I've told you a lot of shit you probably already know, so I'm hoping that this last bit here is going to give you some stuff that you don't know. How am I doing so far? You guys like this or what? So, who here has heard of Fiverr? Okay, small number of you guys. Every one of you in this room should, should know this website and should be a customer of this website. Fiverr with two R's dot com. Anything you want gets done on Fiverr for five dollars. There are people there that will write a fucking press release for five dollars on this <laughs> website. Like, there are, there are, you wouldn't believe the shit people do. So, this is where mainstream people are going, this is where they're spending their money. And you wouldn't believe what chicks are getting away with on this fucking website that you guys aren't doing. This is one of my favorites. I call it the full girlfriend experience because on Fiverr, there are 203 girls right now on Fiverr who for $5 will pretend to be your girlfriend on Facebook. <laughs> How cool is that shit? Right? That's going to help me make my girlfriend jealous. Maybe it's going to make my friends think I'm pretty cool if I've got some chick on Fiverr, on, on Facebook, going, hey, what a great time we had last night. Holy shit, I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> it's going to get me the attention that I crave as a man. It's going to make other girls notice me. If there's a girl that I want to notice me, and she's a friend of mine on Facebook, and there's some other hot chick in there going, hey, you're awesome. That girl's going to notice me more, if she gives a fuck. Here's more. Sexy pictures. 274 girls on Fiverr right now are selling collections of sexy photos for five bucks. And if you go to their, uh, to their gig pages, you won't believe how many people have bought. You should see all the fucking comments on there. I love your pictures. I can guarantee you, you guys know this, right? There's not a single girl on there selling her own fucking pictures. It's all dudes like us, like fat guys going, here's your pictures. I bought these from some content provider and here you go. And they write back to her thinking she's for real, right? Like, oh my God, can you send me some more? No, uh, the girl quit. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy video. 221 girls on Fiverr. Not just girls, there are some guys on here too, but mostly girls. Will make you a custom sexy video for five dollars. Now some of them aren't custom, some of them are pre-recorded, and if you read the fine print in some of them, you'll see that they are. But some of them are personal. Like I've had I've had girls make videos, like when I did my book launch for Chronic Marketer, I had this girl in a bikini with a hula hoop yelling Chronic Marketer over and over again so I could spam the shit out of YouTube, and it worked really well. Okay, this one's my favorite, right? Remember the old days when we used to have to do fan signs for our affiliates? Right? Well, there are girls on Fiverr charging five bucks for a fucking clothed fan sign. <laughs> we used to do this for free. Every, we used to go on GFY and be like, who wants fan signs? You get like 500 fan sign requests and have to like, you know, give, give a model a whiteboard for a fucking day and shoot a million pictures of her. These girls are getting five bucks every time they do it. Okay? And sexy voice, this is the other one. Over 100 people on Fiverr will record a sexy custom message for you and stick it in a Dropbox or let you, let you download it or whatever the case may be. So, I'm just going to back up here for a second. I'm hoping you guys are figuring this out and you're, you're putting two and two together here, but I'm going to say it out loud anyway. I feel like I need to. You can do this shit in your members areas right now. Right? You can send me a fan sign that says, hey Brad, thanks for joining. How awesome am I going to feel 
after getting a fan sign that says, hey Brad, thanks for joining. Right? We appreciate your business. Make me feel like I'm real. Like I'm not just a number that got locked out after three countries tried to log in or whatever. Make me feel like I'm a real person and that you value my business. Right? When I go into Walmart, there's a fucking old man standing there going, welcome to Walmart! Welcome me to your fucking porn site. So here's what most of you guys are missing. On almost all of the, of the uh, pay site tours I investigated, very few, in fact, I can't even think of one example right now, where anybody tried to sell me anything more than content. You didn't sell me on the value of your paid experience versus free. You guys are smart. You can build backends that do this kind of stuff. You know I came from YouPorn when I land on your website. Give me a custom user experience that says, hey, tired of YouPorn? Tired of the same old scenes? Tired of this? We have fresh faces. We have HD. We have this. We have that. Show me a split screen of your members area and YouPorn and you better make it look fucking better. Nobody's doing this. Nobody's selling me on why I should upgrade from free. Nobody addresses free in their, in, uh, in their tour. There isn't a single link in any pay site tour that I could find that said, why should you join us? There isn't an FAQ. There's nothing. It's like, continue tour, more scenes, continue tour, more scenes, continue tour, more scenes, join now. You guys are all, all I shouldn't say all, everyone I looked at still had their tours built like it was 2002. And people would just join because they wanted to see what was behind the thumbnails. Build a community. AbbeyWinters.com did a really good job of this, uh, as did Suicide Girls. They made more than just a content dump for me to access. They gave me a feeling that I was a part of something. Suicide Girls is awesome at this. Uh, they have forums, they have interviews, they have you know, interviews with musicians. Like, they really make it feel like, sort of like you know, Hef did in the old days with Playboy. It was more of a lifestyle feeling as opposed to just me looking at vaginas all day long. How-to content. This I thought was really interesting. Nobody was doing this. Um, Amateur Allure is a good example of who could have done this. Amateur Allure has what I believe to be extremely good quality content. The, the videos are shot really well, they're lit extremely well, the girls are well made up, they're well dressed, everything is on point with the way they do their stuff. Now, again, it's 2013. Hundreds of millions of people own digital SLR cameras that shoot video. They want to know how that shit is done. And they're not creating any content to show, hey, here's how we light up our, our, our scene. You know, here's the lights we use. Here's the camera we use. When I buy a rock CD, like if I buy a, a, an album, it tells me what kind of guitars the fucking band uses on the inside of the album notes, right? You guys don't tell me what kind of cameras you're using on your back end. And the cool part about this is that if you start to create this kind of content, it's totally PG. This content can be used on YouTube. You can share your lighting techniques and still brand yourself in a mainstream space and get a lot of free traffic, right? So not only can you use it in your members area, but you can use it to entice new members. Hey, look how good a job we do lighting up these bottles before we come on their faces. <laughs> User-generated content. Very few, if any, of these member sites that I joined had an option for me to upload my own movies. Maybe I made a porn movie with my wife and I want everyone to see it, right? As a member, if there were users submitting content to the website, I would feel like I was a part of a bigger experience. Suicidegirls.com is fucking awesome at this, right? For every one professional photo set they put up, they put up two photo sets where it's like, Sally wants to be a suicide girl. Should we choose her photo set as the photo set of the week? Right? And I'll tell you right now, going in there, I was clicking on the amateur stuff way more than I was clicking on the pro stuff. It's kind of like, the analogy I can draw is, when you go to the strip club, right, and there's some random chick at the strip club, and she's getting a lap dance, everybody starts watching the random chick get the lap dance. You, know, you ever see this happen at a strip club? Because it's out of the ordinary. It's the average everyday girl. We love that shit. Right? So user-generated content in suicidegirls.com, it really made me feel, and I don't know how they do this, 
I'm sure it's not the experience that I felt, but I felt like there were members of this website that loved it so much that they were, you know, that they were getting their boyfriends to take pictures of them so that they could submit them as well. I felt like the girls uh, in Suicide Girls wanted to be there. I felt like I was a part of a community. And I felt so warm and fuzzy about that membership versus all the others because of that user-generated content experience. It added an extra layer to my experience and made me feel like I was a part of something bigger than just a dump of content, which is what most of these websites are. Lifestyle branding. Hustler's good at this. Suicide Girls was really good at this. Um, sell me t-shirts. Sell me booty shorts. Sell me stuff to give my girlfriend. Sell me whatever. You know, I have a, I went to the Playboy Mansion one year and in the gift bag there was a Hustler um, toque. I wear that fucking thing religiously in the winter. I don't care, I don't care if I go to the fucking bank and the bank lady's like, who's this guy with the Hustler hat making deposits? Like, I don't give a fuck. I like Hustler, I don't care what anybody thinks. So, a lot of you guys are missing that. You're not offering me any merchandise. You're not offering me any kind of way to not only feel better about being a member, but to also help to advertise your fucking brand, right? Not many people were doing this lifestyle branding stuff, and I was quite surprised, but Suicide Girls does a really good job. Hustler has a whole store on the back end. But another thing you might want to consider is maybe sending something. You know, maybe offering people that option to have something sent to them if they want, only if they opt in for it. Marketing to women and couples. Um, I talked to a lot of Facebook users. You wouldn't believe how many women responded to my poll saying, you know what my problem is? Most porn is marketed to men, and I don't really feel like this stuff is for me, but I would buy it if it was marketed more towards me or more towards me and my boyfriend. Um, there was a lot of that from women. A lot of women had that response saying, this is all dude-centric stuff, it's all, you know, whatever. So I thought that's where uh, Video Box, with their Roku offer, really kind of bridged that gap of marketing to couples who might have normally bought pay-per-view in a hotel or on their satellite or on cable, but that's a huge payment to make every time you want to watch a single movie, you're paying like 20 bucks or whatever for pay-per-view. Marketing to that audience is huge, but a lot of people still have this mentality that adult content is still in the shadows and it's still, you know, when we first started in this industry online, our biggest benefit was the fact that you could now download adult content without having to park your car at that store with a flickering strobe light, right? And have your fucking neighbor see that you shop for porn at this, you know, CD store, right? It gave us that opportunity to do it privately. Well, in 2013, so much has changed, right? Everybody's open about adult content. People are willing to talk about their porn experience. You know, they're not uh, ashamed of it like they used to be. So marketing to couples, marketing to women, now makes more sense than ever. So your challenge now is to try, not to try, your challenge is to make your paid user experience feel more like the supermarket and less like the forest. You've got to turn YouPorn and Pornhub and RedTube and all these other fuckers into a forest experience by making your experience so much better, but also selling me on that experience. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.